Good morning. Hey. It is truly an honor and a privilege to be with you all here this morning. I'm so looking forward to learning and growing with you guys for the next three days. In 2006, when I started teaching, I was cool beans with awesome sauce. <laughs> Got to get that right. Cool beans with awesome sauce, that was my motto. Within two years, two years, I had become a model teacher. My classroom was the model classroom. When we had visitors in our building, guess where they stopped? Boom, <laughs> right? My classroom was perfect. I mean, my, my decorations were on fleek. <laughs> my desks were perfectly set up. I always got highly effective on my teacher evaluations. Thank you very much. And I never had any behavior issues. I was perfect. In fact, I remember when people would ask me, how is teaching going? And I would say, why? It's beautiful. Okay? It is very easy. <laughs> this comes natural. And of course, right, I knew that I always wanted to be a teacher since I was a young girl. Here I am living out my dream, and as I said, everything is cool beans with awesome sauce. Until one day, I decided to step out my comfort zone, and I told my babies, let's do something creative today. For a bell ringer, I want you guys to do a free ride. Tell me something about you that I just don't know, because I'm, I'm the bomb teacher. I know everything. No one can teach me anything. I know everything about you. Never. One of my students decided that she was going to do just that. This particular student showed me that I wasn't cool beans with awesome sauce. On her bell ringer, she wrote, every day I go home, I cut myself, and I hope it results in the death of me. Now, of course, after I'm collecting these bell ringers and I'm giving my students their 15 minutes to wrestle with the text, I'm reading through these things and I immediately pull her outside and I'm like, why would you do such a thing like this? This is not a joke. She said, Ms. Simonette, you asked. I said, excuse me? She said, you asked me to write that. I said, ma'am, I said write something about yourself that I don't know. She said, that's exactly what I did. I cannot begin to tell you how my heart broke into a million pieces. Here I am looking at one of my stronger students, extremely quiet, and she is showing me that I'm not cool beans with awesome sauce. Model teachers don't deal with things like this. I said, Andrea, I'm going to have to report this. This is immediate harm to you. She said, Ms. Simonette, I know. I know. And I trust you. And she said, in the midst of you reporting about me, I hope you look within yourself. I, I said, ma'am, let's just go downstairs, right? After I reported Andrea to the authorities, something was happening to me. I wasn't feeling quite right. Was I going to sweep this under the rug, or was I definitely going to dive in? I decided to dive in. This is exactly when I know reimagine my class started with me. In the midst of re reflecting, like deep down in my gut, it hit me, this memory that I have forgotten for whatever reason. I had to remember my favorite teacher, Miss Naomi Payton, who truly saved me. She stood in my way and prevented me from self-destructing. You see, when I was in high school, I lost my grandmother. Those of you that have that type of grandmother, you feel where I'm coming from. Of course, I came from a community that supported me. I had a family that was my cheerleaders, but there was nobody that could make me feel like my grandmother. She could look at me in a second and knew what I was feeling. She knew what my dreams were, and every opportunity she had, she spoke life into me. 
I grew up in a neighborhood that was not so affluent. None of my family decided they wanted to go to college, so everybody was waiting on Precious. No one knew what I was going through except my grandmother. So after my grandmother passed away, I was like, what the heck, why? I wanted people to talk to me, to understood, understand what I was going through. Nobody did it. I did and said some unspeakable things. And you know what the adult said? Oh, just let her pass. She lost her grandmother. But they didn't know that I was upset. I was mad. I was angry. And I wanted everybody to feel my wrath. So I deliberately went to school every single day. I said things. I did things. I was waiting, just acting out. Nobody did anything until Miss Peyton was bold enough to pull me to the side and she said, let me tell you one thing. What would your grandmother think if she saw you today? I looked at this lady and I was like, And it was as if my grandmother came through Miss Peyton and said, yeah, I'm talking to you. <laughs> I cannot tell you I was paralyzed. I couldn't move. I couldn't say anything because here is this teacher bold enough because, you know, no one spoke to me because they were afraid of what I was going to say or do. But this teacher, she said, oh, no, ma'am, I love you, but I'm going to hold you responsible. It may get difficult, but that is why I am here. I am here to guide you. I am here to help you. The only thing that came out of me were tears. That's the only thing that came out. Of course it was difficult as I moved through, but it was Miss Peyton that stood right in front of me every turn to prevent me from self-destructing. I continued to dig deep, digging, 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 conducting research, then I stumble across this novel, The Freedom Writer's Diary. I said, what the what? How could I have not known about this? So I have this memory in my heart. I have this book in my hand, and I was like, yes, I have to change my heart in order for me to change hearts. All of my students in my classroom, they came and they just did their work. I didn't get to know them, right? I was teaching over them. I was teaching to them. I was never teaching and learning with my students, my God. Who did I think I was? I was not perfect at all, but my students thought I was. It was at this point I started teaching to my students, right? I have to teach to the heart. I have to get in there. I'm bringing in curriculum from outside of the classroom. Okay, mess up the desk. I ripped down the walls. Everything was not perfect anymore. It wasn't perfect because I wasn't doing everything everybody told me to do. I was doing what I felt was right. I was remembering the student that I was in high school, what type of teacher I wanted to be. I wanted to not only teach from my mind, I wanted to teach from my heart. I wanted my students to know, yes, my expectations for you are extremely high, but I want you to be a great person too. We had so much in class, right? Right before me, I saw walls breaking down. I was creating a culture before I even knew it. Students were a little bit more caring. They started to communicate a lot more. Community was building, collaboration, thinking critically, creativity, culturally responsive teaching, and learning was happening. And I'm looking around my classroom like, wow, all because of one student decided to love me enough to tell me the truth. When we were in class, one of my students, Adonis, said, Ms. Simonette, you know what? I actually like your class. <laughs> I said, well, thank you. I appreciate it. I happen to like it this time, too. How can we make it longer? I said, no, no. Mm -mm. Our time is 90 minutes, and that's all you're going to get, right? But then it hit me again. What happened when I listened to my student before? When I decided to continue to listen with my heart, everything else fell into place. 
So I said, okay, I'll do something different. I'll create a club. Kids like clubs, right? So there was a part of me that my students didn't know about. When I was in high school and when I was in college, I was a spoken word artist. I was a poet. <laughs> they didn't know this about me. So I was like, I could tell them or I could show them. So of course, you know, sometimes we have to act hip because kids, they don't register. So I went home, put on some like cutout jeans, some little sneakers, and I went looking for those sneakers, by the way, and I took one of my younger cousins with me because I didn't know what sneakers to get. I wanted the hip ones. Had on a hat, put my hair down, I walked in, and I just flowed. They looked at me, well, what's that? I said, yeah, you didn't know I had skills, right? I was like, yeah. I said, are you guys interested in that? They were like, yeah, we want to do that. I said, wait a minute, what? Whoa, wait, I was like, uh, in the after school program, we could do that. It was like, mm-mm, Ms. Simonette, you're very smart. You could bring it in the classroom, too. <sighs> okay, we could do this because it's writing. It's a creative writing class. I could do this. Before I know it, I had created the Viking Freedom Writers. From that led the Florida Freedom Writers Foundation. I remember calling Ms. Gruel. I said, Ms. Gruel, um, I got a situation. <laughs> Can you help me out? She said, Precious, you're fine. Just do it. Whenever you need help, let me know. I'm calling you right now. <laughs> Did I know what I was doing when I first started? No. I made several mistakes. But my students and I, we made them together. I knew what they wanted. I knew what type of educator I wanted to be. And I just flowed. I flowed. And I saw all these great things happening to my students. Before I knew it, we started touring Miami-Dade. What's happening, what? We started going throughout the state of Florida. I remember when we got our first email to travel to a different state for free. I said, uh, you know I have 10 students on my spoken word team, right? They was like, we know, we saw them, they're awesome, bring them. What? So I'm having to speak to my parents, like, uh, so we're going to go out of town, and they're going to be performing, and I'm going to be doing some workshops. Is that okay? They was like, they're with you. It's fine. But you know, as educators, we have to be safe. Oh, of course I brought some parents with me for chaperones, right? <laughs> parents like, woo! Okay? That was all great. But these students became extremely successful. They changed right before my eyes, and I couldn't have been more happier because you know what? When they succeeded, I succeeded. And that's truly what mattered to me. Many people ask me, how did you become teacher of the year? How did you win superhero educator of the... I like, Listen, I got nothing, I don't know. I was just me. And I made a lot of mistakes. I knew who I was as an individual because I remembered. I started there. Know who you are as an individual. Learn what type of educator you want to be. Do you want to be the educator that's firm, fair, and friendly? Do you want to be the educator that kids know that you're off the wall? Do you want to be the educator that stands in front of your class all day and lecture? That's fine. But just know and just make sure that the, whatever educator you decide to be, it is best for your students. Be passionate. Be passionate. The minute kids know that you are not genuine, it's like they can sniff it. <sighs> and when they sniff it, they give you things that you don't want to see. Be passionate, I beg you, be genuine. Welcome mistakes. Mistakes are our friends, right? They help us to grow. It doesn't matter the mistake you make. What matters is what you do after you make that mistake. Welcome the mistakes. Reflect, and reflect often, right? And I mean, honestly, right? Because like, if I would've got this information in 2006, <laughs> I would've be like, shush up anyway, and kept walking, right? Hush, hushity hush. You are wrong, I am right, I'm always right, I'm the model teacher, no. Reflect often and honestly, right? Tell your story. 
tell your story. So many times as educators, we go into our classrooms and we close those doors, we create our utopia, and it is interrupted by the bell and the swinging open of the doors, you're like, dang it! But just imagine how different our experiences as educators could be if we just truly share our stories. I am not perfect. I don't know everything, but guess what? I know a bomb diggity educator that does. That educator is going to help me to be better and vice versa. Share our stories because you create a community. And at the end of the day, you won't be alone. Lastly, walk by faith and not by sight. No matter what things look like in front of you, they may be disgusting, right? But let's learn to change our mindset and realize that we have the opportunity to make it better if we continue to try and never, ever, ever give up. Had I not learned to walk by faith and not by sight, I wouldn't be the teacher, sponsor, coach of the Viking Freedom Riders. I wouldn't have been a CEO of the Florida Freedom Riders Foundation. I wouldn't be an original Freedom Riders teacher. I ask you to look at this video so that you all could see what walking by faith and not by sight looks like. A true creative writing class gives an individual the opportunity to learn about themselves. I think a lot of teenagers are lost, and because they are lost, they make the wrong decisions. So I am a firm believer that if a teenager knows who they are, they could withstand peer pressure. I have something to say because I am somebody. I am freely writing myself into existence. We are. Application at birth. I had this idea of teaching what people told me that I should be. So a teacher wasn't supposed to be emotional. Um, a teacher wasn't supposed to get to know her students. A teacher wasn't supposed to invest too much time. Without her, some of us wouldn't even be here, actually. We wouldn't even be living if they hadn't learned how to deal with it the way Ms. Simon had taught us to. My students have fear of being murdered, fear of abandonment fear of being molested again. Those are the fears that they have. So the minute you stop writing is when somebody else could step in and write your story for you. Are you going to allow them to do that? So if you're throwing in the towel, does that mean that you're giving up necessarily? I would even try to turn, like play with that in your piece. I'm here to hear your cries and pick you up, but I refuse to give you the playbook. Life is the worst thing that can happen to you. For it has there was a student that wrote to me in her journal that every day she goes home, she cuts herself, and she hopes that it will end up being her last date. She wrote it in a diary entry. And I think that student gave me a wake-up call. So in the midst of me conducting research, I run into the novel, The Freedom Writer's Diary. I read that book in one day, and I was like, okay, this is the methodology of teaching that I need to adapt. This is who I am. I've spent most of my life living in poverty being afraid to walk out of my front door because of the risk of being shot. Crackheads getting high right in front of I want of you me. to list every complication, every adversity, every hardship that you've experienced, nonstop. Just list them. These kids deal with real life issues. And again, they're able to use this spoken word to heal themselves. This is their way out. This is their release. You just can't believe that this is happening to these students in this school because society and statistics tell you that this is not supposed to happen. It's no longer about us. It's about our communities. It's about showing that we can be a product of Miami Gardens and come out phenomenal. When your back is against the wall, against the ropes, use those lynches to lift your head high, I said stand. William was the troubled child, like, he would, he flipped Norlin upside down for administrators. Uh, I was a convicted felon of burglary and possession of burglary tools. I was in gang relations. Uh, I've been shot at. I've been stabbed before. Two years ago, you did not hear I'm going to class. Two years ago, you heard, yeah, uh-huh. I skipped so many classes, like, Right now, I'm legit trying to run to make sure that I can graduate, because I'm catching up from my ninth and 10th grade year. 
William literally flipped his life 360. Just sitting here and, and trying to change. I know a lot of people that died trying to change. It's just something you're scared of. This is where I have to come in and show them that they can be resilient. And one way they could be resilient is by writing their stories, because no one in this world has the right to take the pain away from you. Rope sharp, jabbing at your sides. I bet each hip feels like a bullet. Mother's lullabies with poems, and you never did know them. We never had an education, but we all the subtractors. They poem fields of my brothers and sisters like protractors. Arms, ain't winning degrees. Courage, strength, patience. Porque todavía sigo afro boricua taino. Rocking that high top fit for a crowd in the afro. They can't be held down. She's giving them an opportunity to scream out loud through words what they are feeling inside. Standing on stage and telling people your story and hearing them say, you touched me, that's the most amazing thing you can ever hear. She's just the type that'll try to push you beyond those limitations if she sees a little bit more inside of you. We don't really think of her as our teacher. That's our mom. Miss Eminem said, Adonis, do you want to perform at the gala? I was like, um, look, Miss Eminem, I don't do this. I only did that one time. Like, Miss Eminem, no, I can't. The next time she did it, she said, Adonis, you're performing at the gala. And she already wrote my name down. She said, you're on the program. I was like, what? Miss Eminem, I didn't even agree to this. Every time she has something for us, you never know what it is. But I promise you, you're always going to be safe in her hands. She sees us so much bigger than who than what we see, and that's amazing. It's really amazing to have someone like that in your life because it's like, wow, is, is that really what you see in me? When you have someone that give their all, that's so passionate, caring, loving, nurturing for students, right? Just imagine the impact she had on these kids' lives. It gives them um, self-esteem, some confidence. It builds their, their worth. Being around her has made me take a bigger approach to teaching. As teachers, we're told to kind of stand back, don't touch your kids, don't hug your kids, don't give too much because you get attached. And she has taught me that that is absolutely incorrect. So she's impacting all those kids. So she's at every event, Saturday, Sunday, Monday nights, giving up her own time. She has her, her two little boys, and she carries them to these events. She is a master juggler. I don't even have words to describe it. It's, it's motherhood at its finest. She always was a go-getter, always, no matter what. Nothing can stop her. My mom has influenced me to always be strong. We may have our, our days where we feel low and things of that sort, and it's okay, take that moment. But at the end of the day, you need to pick yourself up because life is not gonna wait for you. I don't feel like what I'm doing is a job. I feel like it's my life's work. So I may be exhausted, but at the end of the day, it's that good exhaustion. It's that, yes, my mind is clear, my heart is good. I'm helping the world to become a better place. Um, it's about walking in purpose, and I'm really happy that I know what I was, what I'm supposed to do with my life. I beg all of you to please, please, please be bold, be fearless, write yourselves into existence. Thank you. Mm -hmm.